Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Lisa. I am Spiritual Coach Lisa Hobb. It is Sunday, November 22nd, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new, if you're just finding this podcast, please be sure to check out my website at lisahop.com. That's L-I-S-A-H-O-P-P.com for all of my services, all of my upcoming events, and all about my books. Most of my services are available not only in person, but also by telephone and Zoom. My clients are all over the world, so please check it out and please feel free to email me at serenityharbor at verizon.net if you have any questions about the services that I offer. I would appreciate it. I would love to hear from you. And for those of you coming back, my intrepid listeners, thank you so much. I love your feedback. I always get amazed about who is listening and uh, just grateful, just very grateful. So thank you so much. And please like, subscribe and share. Please keep coming back. I just appreciate you and I really want our little hub to grow and grow and grow. So it's the week of Thanksgiving. My feeling and my thoughts are that this this Thanksgiving is a holiday that we need more than ever. We need this holiday for healing. To just stop, breathe, and heal. Thanksgiving was originally started as a national holiday by our president here, Abraham Lincoln. Because at that time, in 1863... The country needed to stop and heal as it was torn apart by a civil war. It was changed a little bit by President Roosevelt in 1939, just moved a week. But it was also understood at that time as the world was really at the start of World War II, how important healing was. And here we are again, at a time in our country and our world where we are being so tested, so tested by fear, by diversities, by adversities, by misunderstanding, lack of communication, resistance against change. If you listened to my podcast before, you know that I've told you that we're in a time of change. We very, very much are. And depending on your background, whether you are biblical or religious in nature or spiritual or none of that, most people have a great understanding of the times that we're in. And it's promoted a lot of fear. Because there, I don't feel most of the time there's one human being that loves change. <laughs> no, I mean, we all want positive change, but we don't, we also fear it because we don't know about what it will bring, what will it mean, how will our lives be different. So oftentimes we fear change so much that we, we stay in our zone of discomfort and fight against it because of the fear of what may come, of the what-ifs. And that's really unfortunate because change is always positive and change is always good, even if it doesn't look that way at first. And we are in a change in our world where we are coming to times when we will be more one, more harmonious, more of a light about us in this world, more of a breath of fresh air, matriarchal instead of patriarchal. Mm, Do you understand why people are fighting? Mother energy coming to earth, more nurturing, more caring, more giving. So guess who doesn't like that? (laughs) 
must be so threatening and scary to a patriarchal energy. But think about this for a moment. How many of you listening, whether you're male or female, feel nurtured by a motherly energy, a caring energy, a nurturing energy? It's all going to be all right. You'll have enough food and you'll have enough clothing and you'll have a roof over your head and all will be comforted. What would be so scary about that? Power? Loss of power? So that's what we're up against. We're up against the fear of losing power. I want to say sharing, the fear of sharing. What does that mean? Will there be enough for everybody? Will that person have more than me? All the hidden shadows within us. So all of 2020 and before 2020 were about the tests and the challenges the boot camp of getting ready for that time. But look around you and see the light shining through because the light is shining through. And everybody that is fighting against change will eventually change. Hate will go away. Racism will go away. Bigotry will go away. Selfishness will go away. And we've been going through this not just over 2020. When our President Obama was elected in 2008, fear was tremendous then. Globalism, oh my goodness, what does that mean? I want to keep my own. I want to take care of myself. Keep it all in my country. Our national events, our national elections are all about fears, hope, and the root feelings about change. But not just about national and local elections, but also about how we interact with each other. Are you one that doesn't want to wear your mask? Makes you feel uncomfortable? Are you defiant about Thanksgiving? I've seen so many posts on Facebook that want want to rebel against what is needed at this time. Want to rebel against precautions about caring, looking out for each other, especially this week in regards to Thanksgiving. I'm going to do what I want anyway. Whether it affects my neighbor or not. And it's incredibly hard. I'm sure for my listeners, it's incredibly hard for myself about Thanksgiving. What to do? What precautions to use? Some are just going to ignore and do whatever they want. Crowd an airport. Get their family together. And and some are the other extreme where they're eating alone. We 
wouldn't it be wonderful if we could all come together and talk about it and understand it doesn't have to be one way or the other wouldn't it be wonderful and I'm sure it's happening in some places where our neighborhood checks on each other shows gratitude for each other is making sure there is someone that isn't all alone that has something to eat that feels cared for those who fight against restrictions that resist restrictions that Think of only themselves. They are fighting change. But eventually everyone who is on this earth will flow to the change. Hopefully it will not be in their own personal energy field an event or a loss or pain that brings them to that change. Or some people know as karma or consequences. We never should want for bad things to happen to others. Sometimes that's all that can happen. But then other times it happens and the person doesn't change at all right away. An inner shift will happen. Now, connected to this inner shift, planets are aligning, galaxy systems, star systems are aligning. It is not just a Bible or another prophecy document, prophetic document that talks about times changing. Just like the star of Bethlehem lit up the sky when Jesus Christ was born. The planets and the solar systems and the skies are telling us it is a time of change. The Mayan calendar even tells us about the time of change. December 21st, 2020 is supposed to be a very important date where 3,000 years of predictions come to be. Now, just like in 2012, you may feel, eh, not much happened. But it did. It does. Sometimes it's subtle. Sometimes there's a ripple effect that you don't notice. You know, sometimes we don't notice the tremors. We just notice a huge earthquake. But prophetic history backs up that we are in changing times. And it's good. It is good. Recently, Here in America, we had an election. And there is much discord about that election. But there was higher consciousness in effect during the election. And now there is fear of change or there is a fight against change promoted by conspiracy theories. I tell you truthfully, because I would tell you truthfully, always, 
the election that we had in my country was legitimate, valid, real, truthful, very, 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 very limited amount of any fraud. It was a voice, this election, to choosing higher consciousness. And whether you feel anything about either candidate, whether you don't like either of them, it was still a choice of higher consciousness because it chose against bullying, hate, inequality, lies. It chose against that. So well done. Well done. Well done. So it's a step forward with a whole lot of work yet to be done. And the unrest is still going to happen because... of the patriarchy who do not want change and those who support the patriarchy or who feel comfortable with the patriarchy because of roles that they've always been traditionally taught to play So words like socialism are bandied about. You know, I'll be honest with you. When you hear someone have a fear of socialism, and by the way, I got to word this correctly so you don't tune out. (laughs) Many times when someone has a fear of socialism, it is not the actual definition of socialism. It is the fear of a change from patriarchy to matriarchy. Everyone taken care of. Now, I'm not saying, that's why I said don't tune out on me. I'm not saying that I am for what you may feel is socialism if you do know what that is. I'm not talking about being for something that may be seen in Venezuela or, you know, other countries around this world. I'm saying that there's a code going on here. And when people often talk about socialism, they're not actually talking about socialism. They're talking about, I don't want us to become one. I don't want everyone to have health care. I don't want to be supplied for. It makes me nervous. I'm used to a capitalist system where I have to work my butt off and hope that I get ahead. Because that's what I know. That's only what I know. And that's also what my parents knew and my grandparents knew and my great-grandparents knew. And this stuff that you talk about, about the all and all of us being taken care of, and all of us looking out for each other, that makes me nervous. What does that even mean? Because I've never known that. And I don't like what I don't know. Right? That's what's going on. It's just going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Do you know right now, during this year of a pandemic and job loss and long, long lines in food banks, 
there are people who made a trillion dollars this year. Do you think that's ethical? Do you think that's right? They did it on their yachts while people were suffering. That's evil. Wouldn't it be all right for us to live in a world where someone who is a billionaire gets up every day and enjoys helping others? Don't you think, I do, that if someone works for a billionaire, that they should have the best pay, the best health care, the best conditions. Oh, but they don't, do they? They run themselves ragged. Sometimes they're in the food line. Isn't there something quite... quite unethical about an organiz- a, a corporation a billion dollar corporation not giving out to their employees because they always do because their employees are so well cared for but actually have to get up, get up a fund and, and get up charity for their own employees why do their own employees need charity when they're becoming close to being trillionaires that's happening why can't we not live in a world where we get up every day and many of you do by the way But everybody gets up every day and says, can't wait to serve and can't wait to receive. Hello there. Are you having a good day? Neighbor, is there something you need? Is everything all right? Can I pray for you? Can I get you something at the store? You don't do that enough. We don't love ourselves enough and we don't love others enough. It's going to change. So how do you change it? Well, first, this is Thanksgiving week. Come together on Thursday here in America. You can join us around the world if you want as well. Take a moment and be very grateful for the fact that you're sitting there together and if you cannot be together try to find a way to call to zoom to text use the day for healing send healing around the earth pray for healing for yourself this thanksgiving more than ever should be a thanksgiving of prayer and healing to put the weapons of every way down the weapons of your words your anger your hate your fear put it down take a moment and breathe Your neighbor is not your enemy. The rich among us are not our enemies. Even if they did profit off of a pandemic. Prayer, healing, using your voice for positive change. So what I'm saying is, 
So don't be angry. Go inside. Listen to your higher consciousness, feel love, and then send it out to others. And take this day to be a day Though yes, you can celebrate. But also make the good intention for it to be a day of healing. Secondly, when I say show love for yourself, inside I mean understand how important you are and how much you matter and how much others must matter equally We have to do the best we can, but we don't have to be perfect. Don't complain about having to wear your mask. You're wearing it for somebody else as they're wearing it for you. It's so simple. Treat others as you would want them to treat you. And make sure to treat you as you wish others would treat you. Communication. We're in a bit of a time where we can't talk to each other. We can't talk to each other. There are people that I personally know that believe conspiracy theories. That believe the world is a certain way. They will not listen to facts and truth. But many will. We often wait when we're having a conversation for our turn to talk. See as much as you can, how much you can listen. And for those that are not in a place to listen, you can only pray for them. You can only send them energetic love. Take care of them too, as you would want anyone to take care of you. We often judge, don't we, or make fun of people. The worst among us are those that need the love the most. No matter who they are. And they can test us. I get very tested by those who are... people that want to harm others for their own selfish gain but positive will always overcome negative love will always overcome hate light will always overcome dark so complaining hating making fun of Promoting the same type of energy that others do is not going to bring a cure to it or a healing to it. Oh, 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 oh. And do not, I am not saying that there are good people on both sides. (laughs) I am not saying that both are equally at fault. All I'm saying is, is that 
you want higher consciousness in this world, the higher consciousness of love and empathy, of everyone having enough food, enough funds, good health, it has to start with caring communication, prayer, action. Don't engage with them. You can't convince somebody who's in their place, solid place, and they won't be convinced. If people don't want to know If people aren't ready for change, then talking will not get it done. Their journey will bring them to it. Your job is to assist, not to force. Uh, Assist by being your highest self and knowing it will come back to you ten times over. So when you go this Thanksgiving to think, I'm going to get my hub together, my huddle together of all my people, and I'm going to ignore what's happening in the world, and I'm going to be defiant against my mayor or my governor, my neighbor, the grocery store clerk, I... I want you to stop and think about that. I'm not saying that you shouldn't celebrate Thanksgiving. I'm saying you should celebrate Thanksgiving. In the same, with the same intention of the first Thanksgiving in November of 1863, during a war-torn nation, that needed to help itself. In many ways, we are a war to our nation again, but this time, it may not be as bloody, but it's just as divisive. We're just as torn. Just this morning, I saw a confederate flag on my TV. I've seen confederate flags in my neighborhood. That saddens me. Because of its symbol. Of the person who has it. What it means to them. We're all going to change to a time of unity and oneness. And nothing will be taken from you. It will only be given to you. There are enough resources on this earth for everyone. We do not have to hoard. In some places, the toilet paper is disappearing again. Change will occur. Whether you fight it or not. If you're with the flow, it's easier. It's quicker. When you resist it, it's more painful for yourself and others. Then one day, because we all get a judgment, one day you get to see your impact. Make your impact a good one. 
Think of others as much as yourself. Yes, always think of yourself. But think of others too. I never take the last one of something. Even if it's hard to find. There's a particular salmon. Smoked salmon that I love. It doesn't come out enough. But when it comes out, I will get more than one. But I'll never take all. That is my way of thinking about others. It's the small things like that that make a difference. See what you can do to promote the healing this Thanksgiving and make a difference. Send food over to someone. Donate to a food drive. Make a long overdue call. Just energetically send someone love. Whatever speaks to you is perfect and appropriate, whether it's small, medium, or large. Think with your heart, not your fear. The wonder of our age is that we can have community through the internet. And oftentimes we make community for negative means. We get our social media groups together, we join them. Maybe they're a conspiracy theory group or some other kind of hate group. And we click together. Wouldn't it be wonderful? It will be wonderful when that's a thing of the past. And our community is just one community about love. And we're clicking together for fun. This Thanksgiving, take a deep breath. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. Love your country. Love Love, 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 love. And then eat your favorite food. And I send love out to you. And many blessings. Step back and look at what's happening. Do not get diverted by the words of people that are not working for the light. We are in changing times. Wisdom, knowledge is coming to us, is here. There is nothing to fear because you're not in it alone. No matter how you feel at times, you're not in it alone. We're all here to be in this experiment together. And when this light fully descends upon this earth, remember That which needs to be healed will be healed. Illness, racism, bigotry, inequality, all our sins, all our sins. No, health is not a sin. But the past sins that we've lived as a country and a world will be healed. And because it's healed, And because we are one, and because we will have our needs met, and our positive connections, health will be healed. 
happiness will come, joy will be here. And you may not believe it, but it is not that far away. Try to join, take hands. Be a part of the evolution and the revolution. You're here because you want it to be. Thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful Sunday. I hope that you have a safe, joyful week. Put aside your fears, your stress, your anxieties that this world has given you. And center yourself. And send virtual hugs and warm thoughts to all those you care for and anyone else that you wish to. Thank you again. God bless.